On The Breakfast, there are reports that the federal government is set to reopen universities. True? We'll discuss the latest on ASU strike, including a meeting of pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors and chairman of governing council called by the Minister of Education. Also on The Breakfast, Nigerian Economic Summit Group is worried about the declining rate of food production in the country. We'll discuss this ahead. Plus, we'll have an in-depth analysis of uh, today's papers looking at the headlines. We call it Off the Press. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's the very first day in the month of September 2022 and it feels really great to be back on your screen. Apparently, I probably would have said it's a Monday, but it's not a Monday. It's, uh, you know, a Thursday. But however it is, it's good to have you join us this morning. As always, we start off our conversation with our top trending, but I'd like to let you know that my name is Messi Boko. On our top trending this morning, this is a conversation generating different reactions in different spaces. I mean, where you have Nigerians engaging and talking, we got to talk about this. Now, it's a concern because the EFCC has been fined over unlawful invasion of a firm, and uh, they were handed a sum of one million naira's fine for unlawfully invading a firm that's based in Abuja. For some reason, I don't like to go into you know details of mentioning the company and where it's situated. But this is it. Now, according to the report and the judgment that was given is that the firm was forcefully invaded by officers of the EFCC without any reason. I mean, okay, even if they had a reason, the reason was not reason enough. Does that even make any sense? Yes, it wasn't uh, justified uh, for the invasion and as such, uh, there was an appeal that was made. Now, Justice Inyang Eko, uh, in a judgment in a suit instituted against the EFCC, held that the anti-graft agency acted in breach of the constitutional right of the plaintiff in, in the company uh, in the way the company was invaded for, with full armed agents of the EFCC. And uh, specifically, the judge held that the EFCC breaches or breached section 36, 37, 40, 43, and 44 by scaling up the company without any cost. And uh, this also, the EFCC had said that this would pass for uh, some sort of oppression and repression and unlawfulness. I mean, because everyone has a right to own a property according to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Everyone has a right to own a property. And this is what everyone talks about. So this is really not the first time. I'm not really surprised, but uh, some persons have been excited about this development and saying, hey, this is the way to go forward. Uh, this is the way forward because this is uh, an attitude that has become of several agencies of government, especially where they have to, you know, enforce the law and ensure that people are law abiding, including the police. They are still on this table. Now, to say that this is not the first time, sometime in August, it's one out of many cases. In August uh, 2021, a court also had also fined the EFCC and insisted that they had to pay a sum of 10 million naira for lawfully detaining a citizen. Fast forward, there's also, there are several cases where the EFCC has been fined, uh, you know, the court judgment. But it's one thing for you to have a court judgment. There's also another thing for the court judgment to be respected. And if, you know, the EFCC has been respecting all of these judgments, has been given whether, you know, having to pay fines and what have you, I'm sure that, you know, the attitude would actually reduce. Because over time, uh, there's been an outcry by Nigerians about the activities of the EFCC, how they, you know, go about carrying out their duties, and in some, in some cases, I mean, do you even have a right? So, but um, we hope everyone would say that it's a nascent democracy. We're growing and we're only hoping that we get better. But one of the thing or, you know, one of the ingredients, very important, important factor is that, you know, the law must be respected. We're talking about the rule of law in any democratic dispensation. That has not become it. And it's quite worrisome that you have government agencies who should understand it better. And uh, it, it's quite commendable, you know, that the judiciary is still up and doing with her job because you talk about interpretation. But it's also, on the other hand, for the people to understand their rights. Because if you don't understand your rights, at what point do you have to file for a suit or 
approach a court if you think that your rights have been violated as a person. These are some of the conversations, but like everyone would say, we're still a work in progress as a democracy, and we hope that we get to that point. But, but this is actually you know, a reminder to everyone you know, that's working. It's important that you carry out your duty in a lawful manner, not acting as were, you know, in uh, a banana republic, you know, when a, when a country without control or a system where there are no laws. I mean, the law is not a respecter of anyone. In the course of discharging your duty, it's important that we discharge them being very civil in all of this. It's, all, it's, it's quite related with the issue of police brutality, where in the course of saying, hey, you're trying to ensure that peace and order has been maintained, but you're also cussing you know, and harassing people in the course of all of this. And that's not the way to go. But my big question, and this is where I leave it, is that has this even changed anything? Has it really changed anything for the EFCC? Because this would not be the first time that a fine has actually uh, been handed to the EFCC for unlawful invasion uh, or uh, harassment or detention or what have you has been there over time. But the behavior would not change, maybe till tomorrow. I'm sure we'd have another case where you have EFCC officials acting contrary to the law. But let's even do better. That's the word that we can say. Because every other time, we're very quick to say the president. We blame the president for everything. And I know that the president cannot get out of it. The governors cannot. But we're all in a different sphere of control. Are we doing what we should be doing? Are we acting in accordance with the law? Are we respecting the law as followers and as leaders of these laws? Are we really doing the need for? But that's it. Uh, we move away because we have another one, and that has gotten a lot of people talking that uh, it's, a, it's for me, I think it's a period where that's a lot of politicking. That's the word. Uh, people, it's, it's an election period, it's an election year, and so there would be a lot of politicking. Now, uh, a presidential flag bearer, uh, of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tunubu visits Jonathan and seeks his support ahead of the 2023 elections. It got a lot of people uh, saying different things, but what should we expect? Like I mentioned, it's a season. And when we talk about politics, politics is about interest. And people would always act, you know, decisions, actions will be taken towards their interests. It's what it is. Everybody just wants, you know, to be a thing. But one of the things uh, that a lot of persons have talked about is the fact that, hey, if you go on Twitter especially, you see the reaction. Uh, how can he, you know, once upon a time? Let me even read this. Uh, it's as a campaign uh, about that time in 2014. Let's not forget that this government came into power in 2015. And part of 2015, of course, 2014 will be the period of consultation, campaigning, and what have you. And uh, there are several persons that are responsible for having this government on board. And one of them is a former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And at the time, I read the comments that has been uh, you know, that was captured on the front pages of the dailies at the time in 2014, where he said, Nigerians, the only way to have steady uh, uh, power supply, you say light in this case, fuel is to remove good luck, Jonathan. I promise you in six months, Nigeria will be swimming in crude oil and fuel. Buhari will pay you all 5,000 naira monthly for being jobless. Our youths will be gainfully employed with 3,000 or 3 million jobs uh, per annum. Annually, uh, that's what Bola Ahmed Tunubu was quoted to say at the time where he was also the front runner uh, supporting Buhari to become president. And some people say, is this not an irony? How do you even go back <laughs> to the same person you, you actually you know, talked about. There were a lot of issues. He's also visited, let's not forget, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Lucia Gunabasanjo. And, you know, the issues are not very different. But I'm telling you that it's politics. And because it's politics, anything can happen. Nobody cares. There are no permanent friends, there are no permanent enemies, but you just have permanent interests. And that's what it is. Okay. Another talks about uh, the vice president seeking a global partnership from the United States, uh, talking about uh, Vice President Yemio Sibajo, who's actually taking the trip to the United States, seeking that partnership, uh, you know, with international community so we can actually have, you know, a great country. But um, it's okay to seek, you know, partnership, but uh, the, the reactions and uh, the 
conversation in different spaces is, have we put our acts together? Is the home intact before you begin to ask, you know, for all of the support? Because it might also be factors that might deter, you know, your effort at the end of the day. So it's, it's okay for you to say, hey, I'm going to borrow money outside. I'm going to ask for help outside. And then you come back. There's a rat in the house that's making nonsense of all of the efforts that you would definitely bring in. But that's it this morning on our Top Trending. We take a break. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of a national dailies. Please stay with us.